Hello everybody, I'd like to spend a little time today showing you some tips and tricks about the drag and drop capabilities within the 3D Experience platform. As you know, the platform is really made up of three environments. You've got the uh, native client, 3D Experience, which is uh, the CATIA applications. You have desktop applications like Solid Edge, SolidWorks, and AutoCAD that have uh, 3D Experience sessions within them. And then we have the browser-based dashboard environment, which is our primary tool for working with the plat with the 3D experience. Um, in these three environments, we can work with this drag and drop functionality. First, I want to look a little bit at just dragging, dropping, and manipulating objects directly within the platform itself and the browser. But secondarily, I'd like to look at uh, more of an extreme example of working across applications, these different types of applications. So let's start off here by understanding a little bit about the values, at least as I see them. First off is, uh, what is the value of drag and drop? To me, it's, uh, first off, the ability to support different user experiences. You know, you can use a mouse, uh, you can use a touch screen on a Microsoft uh, Surface or an iPad to work with this type of uh, capability. It reduces input errors because you no longer have to cut and paste and, you know, do multiple operations to get information one place to another. Uh, you don't have to remember the names of things. There's less chance of, of input. You simply move the ob information from one place into an application in another place. And it's natural. I'm really building on these other two. Uh, it just seems intuitive. You know, you want this information to be in this application. You drag it into the application. And, uh, you know, just to move that information is just an intuitive approach. Let's dive into the platform here first, the browser-based platform, and take a look at uh, how we can drag and drop in there. So here I've got a uh, just a task window and a bookmark editor and a list of users. Let's create a little task here first off that we can work with here just to show we can work with tasks. So I build a new task. The system automatically opens it. And the most basic kind of thing is simply drag it into one of the windows. So here I'm dragging something out of the bookmark. And I can drag it into, a, into anywhere on it. I can also drag, without opening it, directly into the task object itself. Maybe I don't have it open. And while it's in to-do, it automatically will put it in as an attachment. The system makes the assumption because it's in the to-do state. This also works for people, of course. I can drag somebody into the task, and it'll make them an assignee. If I look over here in the assignee tab, I can see Naeem is now assigned as one of the people in the process. So... Uh, if, if I close the task, though, and say I move it into work, that kind of changes how drag and drop can work with the task. Now, let's say, for example, uh, there's an item in here that I want to drag in. I'll just drop it onto the unopened task, and it's assigned not as an attachment, but as a deliverable. If I look back in here and we scroll down, we'll see that it is now it automatically attached it as a deliverable to the object. So the system will make assumptions, and this is true across different apps. Um, Let's look at another example with change. Here I've got a change action another, in another tab on the platform, and I want to add a person to it. Well, I got that nice list over here that I was just looking at in my tasks. I want to use one of these people. So I can drag one of these people, say Karen. I'll drag to the tab first, which changes the tab I'm working in, and then I can drop it into the application. So this is, allows you a lot of flexibility. Now, this, as I, this drag and drop capability is an evolving capability, so there are currently limitations. Let's take a look at one of these. Let's say, for example, here I want to grab uh, something from my architect tab I've got open here, this motorcycle assembly, and I want to, I want to place it into the uh, uh, appro, appo, um, uh, changes that I want to make to this change action. I want to put them in as uh, proposed changes. So I go over here, I, I would want to pick the Proposed Change tab, but as you can see, the system will not allow me pick this sub-tab down inside a widget. So this is an example of a current limitation. It's a well-known one. Of course, I can click it, go back to the uh, other tab, and just as I did with the name, I can now move it into that. But I had to remember to pre-select the sub-tab down in the widget. This is a known, as I was saying, this is a known weakness in this particular widget, and it's already being addressed in, in, a, in an upcoming FD. Let's look at another example, a more extreme example with Katia. Here I'm looking at the platform, and I can drag from the platform directly into Katia V5 and open an object. This doesn't seem too impressive, but I can also drag from Katia V5 into the native app, which some people might call Katia V6. 
and open it there. This overall is an, an, probably one of the more extreme examples of drag and drop. And I can drag from Katia V6 back into the platform and open it into a widget that happens, whatever dashboard I happen to be open there. So I can go, uh, you know, I, I've got quite a bit of flexibility. And of course, I can go in the other direction. Now, this is a little bit more interesting because here I'm dragging it into the database driven world of Katia V6. I can open it there, but I can also drag it back into the Katia V5 world and open it there. So there's uh, quite a bit of uh, flexibility. And of course, from Kadia V5, I can also drag it back into the platform. Just a more extreme example. I hope you found this uh, look inside the drag and drop functionality useful. And thank you for your time.